right, good evening, Renewal Youth. Everybody online. We uh, are continuing our waitlisted series, week two out of four. So, uh, you know, last last week we talked that uh, you know God has a plan, but we might have to wait for it. And tonight we're going to actually talk about while we're waiting. We have to trust that God is faithful. So we're going to have our worship team start our evening for us, and uh, we'll get into the Word. Father, we just want to thank you for bringing us all here tonight throughout the community. I invite you into this place tonight, God, and to please allow us to open, our, open up our hearts and surrender to you tonight, Jesus. Please speak through Ken and Paul tonight, and please allow us to hear what you have for us in your name. I'm on. <laughs> See how many things we can move. Yeah. I'm just okay. trying to get my brain going here. Okay, get our brain going. Good evening, everyone. Yeah. You know, you guys are so lucky that we have members of the church who cook for us every Wednesday night. Isn't that awesome? So we have some really good food waiting on us. We had to switch things up just a little bit. So when we're done, you'll be able to go eat spaghetti with bread and butter. All the good stuff. Yes, online, that's why you should be here, because we get to eat. Sorry. Oh, and we have Oreos for dessert. So. Oreos. Now, because we did switch things, because we did switch things up a little bit, we're going to try and go through this extra fast, uh, so we give you some time to eat. So <laughs> hang on to your britches. All right, so welcome to week two of Waitlisted. So we've been talking about waiting and waiting and waiting. And last week you got your little hourglasses. So let's take a look at what must have been the absolute longest game of Jenga ever played. Now, before we start, it's called Cat Jenga. So what do you think is going to happen? Just by that title. Cats. You think cats are going to be playing Jenga? People dressed up like cats, maybe? So let's find out about Cat Jenga and the longest game of Jenga ever plays. Oh, wait. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> but wait. Surprise slide. Wanted to, uh, actually, that's a great reminder. Uh, wanted to say thank you to all the volunteers, youth, leaders, and actual church members that came out to help out. So, youth members, Elijah, Gabby, Grace, Jaden, Kiara, Mary, Peyton, Reese, and Tristan all came out. And that was with the Apocrypha Fair. Our leaders was Barrett, Danielle, Destiny, myself, Paula, and Miss Susan came out. And then Chief was out there. He actually was the one that arranged the whole thing. Uh, so Chief took care of us there. Miss Judy was out here. Miss Kate and Mr. Robert, Kiara's parents, so they came out and helped as well. That was a long day. We got nice and sunburned. It was awesome. Yes, and now Grace and I are peeling. <laughs> I had just a little bit of peeling right on the tip of my nose. Go ahead and click like next, that. in case you guys aren't watching us on Instagram. <laughs> Uh -huh. 
All right, Miss Judy put that together that for us. That was awesome. I think that Mary and I have decided that we have a future in airline control where we can guide the planes in, so we're good. We did have they, a dance. They totally were dancing. We dance I, I looked over and they were having a dance off. It was yeah. like Guardians it's of the Galaxy. Awesome, awesome. So, okay, now we can go to the Cat Jenga. Cat Jenga. Okay, here we go. And we're going. And we're going. We're almost there. Now. So uh, that game that they played was meant to showcase the abilities of the cat machines, all the different types of machines. It's a brand, Caterpillar Cat. And it went on for 28 hours. That game? That game was 28 hours long. By the end, there were 13 layers of blocks, and it was 20 feet high. And if you read real quick, each one of the blocks was 600 pounds, and overall it was over eight tons in weight. Woo! Okay. So, I know we talked about, a few weeks ago, the longest game ever played. We talked about Monopoly. I did a little Googling, and I found uh, the longest game ever played. So, the longest game ever played was played by Gus Peters, Marcel Rubrick, that dude, and Max Wiesenberg. <laughs> They're all from the Netherlands. They're all from the Netherlands. They played a total of 400 games of this game called Gansenboard, which is a, called the Games of the Goose, which is, I guess, popular in the Netherlands. They played for 80 hours. 80 hours that they played. So that's like the longest book, the longest board game ever played is in the Guinness Book of World Record and all that kind of good stuff. <laughs> all right, so what's the longest game y'all have ever played? Uh, Minecraft. 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 Monopoly. Monopoly. I played a game of Risk. It was over two days at a birthday party when I was growing up. Two days. 
Okay. <laughs> so I'm guessing uh, no one's ever played a 28-hour game of Jenga. <laughs> So. so I don't know about you, but if I invested that much time in a game, I'd better win in the end. Because it would be really, really, really disappointing if I didn't win and I played 28 hours of Jenga. So I would be really disappointed. I don't know. I don't know which cat They didn't tell us. They didn't tell us. This is suspense. You just left hanging. Gotta go look it up. Watch All right. 28 hours. So... You know, talking about disappointment, and uh, I know one thing, this is, this is not really silly, but it's a little silly. Something I got disappointed in recently. So, it was Mr. Penn's birthday on April 5th. Your birthday is April 5th. Yes. And Ms. Depp. Yes. Yay! And happy birthday to Nolene today. Happy birthday, Ms. Nolene. Happy birthday, Ms. Nolene. Yes. So... The weekend before Mr. Ken's birthday, I had this grandiose idea. We were, I was going to take him out to his favorite restaurant. He loves to go eat Thai food at this one restaurant, um, and it's, it's excellent. We love to go there, okay? So all week, talking about going to eat Thai food, all week, going out to eat Thai food. It comes on Saturday, and I'm like, you know what? We might want to just make sure that they're still open. You know? And so he looks up and he's like, um, they're open, but only for takeout. I was, yes, but I was so looking forward to the experience of dressing up for his birthday, going out to eat for dinner, and now we have to go through drive through and pick up the food and go home. Uh, I need you to be my personal planner, okay? <laughs> so from now on, hey, I'll just call I was I actually, when we found out that they were only doing takeout, I actually offered, I was like, we can get the food and sit in the parking lot and eat. And she's like, I'm not gonna no. Sit in the car and eat in the parking then lot. she's like, I'm glad we called because if I had dressed up and put my makeup on and gone there and not been able to eat inside, she's like, I'd have been mad. A picnic. I, I, I offered to do a picnic and she said no. Not in the parking lot. No, I didn't care where. <laughs> All right, so have you guys ever been disappointed by something you spent a long, long, long time waiting for? I have. You have? So you had to wait for everybody to get to the bowling alley. I want to get there. Anybody else have something they're really disappointed they've been waiting for? For a long time. For a long, long time. Yeah. I thought you said another nephew. <laughs> that is, you know... And, Mr. Ken and, that, and I, that highlights how much we can hear up here. Yeah. So Mr. Ken and I got really into a um, Netflix series called The Crown about Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip, who recently passed away. But um, And so it was season one, and we, like, binge-watched it, the whole thing, right? And now we have to wait for season two, and it's like, for Season three is out. So I understand. She's, she's missed two, and season three is already out. Yeah, so, you know. She's a little <laughs> So disappointment happens. Uh, I'm sure we've all felt it. Uh, sometimes we invest a ton of time anticipating an upcoming experience or a gift or something, you know, like winning a game or something. But then things don't go the way we hope they go. So we're going to do uh, our first discussion question. we got to be real quick about it so we have eating time. So leaders, hold up your letters. Cool kids, see you back cool here. Cool kids, see you back. Up front. Excellent kids. Be in the back. Be in the back. So quick, make a run for it. 
Dee's up here in the back. Dee's up here in the front. And Dee's right full. Awesome. Dee's in the back. Did you get a letter? Right there. Done. All right, you guys did that quickly. Everybody got to their group. All right, so first question. What's something silly that left you feeling disappointed recently? Second I don't think question. they heard you. Uh, oh, it's okay. First right. question. First question, what's something silly that left you feeling disappointed recently? And what's an example of a big disappointment someone your age might face? So again, we have limited time, so get on your questions and go. All right, it sounds like you guys are really going, but unfortunately, we got to speed this evening along. Because I have so, a rumbly in my tummy. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want Miss Paula to get angry. No. All right, so something that's, uh, you want to go real quick? All right, so something uh, silly that left you feeling disappointed recently. I'll give mine real quick. Uh, so we worked out yesterday, or no, it was the day before when we worked out. Uh, well, we worked out yesterday too, but it was the day before that's in my mind. We were doing a lift, and I, the goal of the lift was to try and hit your personal record, your PR. And I was like 25 pounds off from my PR. I was like... Dumb, it was something small, but it, it was something I looked at all day. I'm like, oh man, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. And I got there and I did my first lift. I'm like, well, that's heavy. <laughs> I was like, that's not going to happen. So I wasn't able to do it. So that was my, my silly, you know, something silly for me. It's, it's nothing important, but, you know, it was just one of those things that just sort of disappointed myself. So, but uh, an example of a big disappointment, you know, would be... Like if I lost my job, that would be huge. That, that would be something massive to worry about. That's a whole different kind of worry than, you know, oh, I couldn't lift the weight I wanted to lift. So uh, I was at one, 185. 185. And I was at 100. And that was my, my squat clean, and my prior squat clean was 202 pounds. So, yeah. <laughs> all right. So, anyone got a silly disappointment? Silly disappointment that they want to share with the group? Anyone? Anyone? Bueller. Bueller. All right. Bueller. Moving along. Bueller. All right. How's the Bueller. A team doing back there? Y'all doing okay? All right. Thumbs up from the yeah, A team. There's only four in that group. How did that happen? All right. Here we go. So, you guys. You know, sometimes the struggle is real. The struggle is real. Okay? Yes, I felt what, like that cat on What is day. happening? These were not my choices. Okay. I might have picked these videos because I thought they were hilarious. So it... It's a chunk. Brooke, you totally, totally threw me off my game with that. <laughs> he is beautiful no matter what his size is. <laughs> All right, so maybe you know what it's like for life to surprise you with a big loss, maybe with some major, major turn of events, or maybe some really big disappointments. Um, when those surprises, when those losses, when those disappointments hit us, we're often left waiting and wondering. And we're wondering sometimes, why did this happen? How long will I feel this way? How do I fix it? Can anyone help me? Or maybe even, where's God? Why am I going through this? Where is God? So today we're going to talk about how to survive 
some of these times of disappointment and crisis and where God is when we're waiting for things to turn around. So what we're going to do, we have our whiteboard here, and we're going to um, brainstorm some reasons why someone might experience disappointment or be in a crisis. So we'll start um, with, this says, if you guys can't see it, I know because maybe some of you guys can't see it, it says when, and then I feel. So we're going to come up with a situation of um, when someone is feeling disappointed or when there is a crisis, okay? For example, I don't know if anyone has experienced this, but when um, your parents divorce, if your parents get divorced, Or how about um, for you athletes when you lose a big game? I know that we've had a lot of um, illnesses going on with the whole pandemic, so you might be having some um, crisis in your family about a loved one gets sick. Someone gets really sick. Does anyone else have any scenarios? And this is just brainstorming, making up stuff. It doesn't have to be something that you've personally gone through. Maybe it's something you know someone has gone through. I saw a hand up. You get hurt, right? So now we're going to come up with some words to describe how you would feel when this happens. Okay? So when your parents divorce, I feel, how would you feel? Depressed? Depressed. Uncertain? Do your parents really love you? That's, that's a major question right there. Any other words? Angry. Angry, that's a good one. All right, how about when you lose a big game? How would you feel if you were playing this? Apopka's going for the championship, state championship, which they always do. How would you feel if you were playing in that game and you lost? What? Pretty sad. Pretty sad. Quit letting West Orange beat you guys. Sad. Look at that. Anger. <laughs> anger. I said that and that anger just oozed out. So those are pretty good. Thank you. That's good. How about if a loved one gets sick? How would you feel if a loved one got sick? Scared. Anxious. Concerned. Helpless. Helpless was a good one. Worried. You guys love that word, angry. <laughs> All right. 
How about... I might have some anger issues. I think we have anger issues going on. How about if you get hurt? Let's say you ride your skateboard. There's a pebble in the street, and you, you hit it, and you go down, and you break a bone. You're going to feel angry. <laughs> Quick story. I was like eight, seven, eight years old. I had one of those, you guys call them penny boards now, but I... I couldn't skate on it standing up, so I'd actually kneel on it and skate. And I hit a rock, and the skateboard stopped, but I kept going. And I went face first into the sidewalk. And it actually, like, ground off this whole side of my face. It, was, it looked like ground beef. Okay. And I had rocks stuck in my face and everything. All right, so we got that angry. Not cool. Any, anything else? Angry if you get hurt? Disappointed. You get sad. So if you get hurt, then you can't compete. You can't keep going. Okay. What if you get rejected by college? The one college you applied for, and they said, um, thank you, but no thank you. How would you feel? I'm sorry? Distressed. Very disappointed. Or distressed. Stressed. I need to schedule some uh, anger counseling with you. Angry. Angry. Bring on the angry. And what if you had your plans canceled? Angry. angry. <laughs> Got a sad. A sad. Okay, we're sad. Disappointed. All right, awesome guys, thank you. So many times, of, uh, and sometimes in these situations that we brainstorm. All right, let's, let's get everyone's attention. So sometimes in these situations that we brainstorm, the disappointment or the crisis is followed by a time of waiting. Because when you find out your parents are getting divorced, it doesn't happen right away. When you find out about the college, it's not right away. So there is that time of waiting. Um, and while you are waiting, you might be waiting to feel better because you want to feel better. You might be waiting to get a second chance. Maybe a pop is going to go to the state championship again and you're going to get a second chance. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe to see if the situation will improve. Maybe you're waiting to see if the situation is going to improve. Or maybe you're waiting to see if God's going to help you. If you're going to get some help. And while you're waiting, you might wonder, can God really be trusted? Does God actually care? Can God even see me? And if God really loves me, why am I still waiting? All right, so now we're going to do um, some small group questions. And um, so they're here on the screen. We're going to have, um, how do you think a big disappointment or crisis could affect someone's faith in God? That's a pretty heavy question. Have you ever experienced any major disappointments or crisis? If you're comfortable sharing, what happened? When you've experienced a disappointment or crisis, how did you feel? And what questions did you ask? So go ahead and share that in your small group. All right, I know everyone is really into these questions, but if I could have everyone's attention back at the front, please. Get everybody's attention back at the front. And we'll go ahead and move on. Um, if you can relate to any of these disappointments or crises, you're not alone. Now, last week we talked about going through um, and studying about four uh, people in the Bible. So tonight we're going to introduce you to someone from the scripture who knows a lot about surviving major moments of crisis and disappointments. And it would be, dun da dun, Apostle Paul. Okay, 
Paul. Paul, not Paula. Paul. Okay. So, uh, if you're familiar with the Bible, there's a good chance that you've heard of this guy, Paul. Right? I think most of everybody has heard his name. So, Paul spent his whole life following God. But he was Jewish. He was a young Jewish man, and he was a high-achieving religious student. Of his, he was like the highest-ranking religious student of, time, of, of his time. But his story took a major turn during the early years of Christianity when the message of Jesus was first beginning to come around. So as a re religious leader, okay. I'd like to talk. Okay. So as a religious leader in the Jewish faith, Paul did not follow the teachings of Jesus. Now, mind you, this, this is the same Paul that wrote you know, the majority of the New Testament. So he didn't follow Jesus. In fact, he believed the followers of Jesus were enemies of God. This belief drove Paul to defend his faith by imprisoning and even killing Christians. He used to hunt down Christians and kill them. Totally did. That's what he did before he started writing books in the Bible and the letters to the churches. He killed people that followed Jesus. But then something significant happened in Paul's life. He had a personal encounter with God and surrendered his life to Jesus. When Paul met Jesus, he couldn't have predicted what God had in store for him. Paul eventually became one of the greatest Christian influencers of all time. He wrote much of the New Testament of the Bible, was a significant leader of the early church, and was responsible for bringing the message of Jesus into new parts of the world. But, I have a little side note. Well, we gotta hurry. All right, just quick hurry. side note. Paul met Jesus after Jesus was crucified. What? 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 That's because Jesus is alive. Thank, Thank you, you Grace. Grace. <laughs> Good job, Grace. Grace gets brownie points right there. <laughs> All right, Jesus I after Jesus was crucified. In person. On, on his way to go kill more Christians, Jesus met him. I and know. in fact, made Paul go blind. Correct. He, he got a Saul. new name. He was Saul. He got a new name. So, but he met Jesus after Jesus. After he, yes. So that was my so, All right. So despite everything good that God had in store for Paul, Paul's life, after turning towards Jesus, after changing his, um, his outlook and not killing Christians any longer, he had some really, really difficult times, too. Um, including some big crises and a lot of waiting. One of the major ways that Paul was waitlisted often in his life after he decided to follow Jesus, he was put in jail. In fact, a lot. A lot. And it's kind of ironic because that's what he did to Christians. If he didn't kill them, he would put them in jail. So he ended up in jail. Um, even though Paul had changed his beliefs about Jesus, many of the government, governmental people and the religious leaders still did not believe Jesus, still did not believe in Jesus, still did not believe in Christianity. Um, so in their eyes, allowing someone to spread the word of Jesus was a major threat to their power and to their control. And um, so they tried to imprison him and sometimes kill influential followers of Jesus. Paul spent about five years total in prison um, for spreading the message of Jesus. And while he was there, you know, he's being promised all this stuff. He's following Jesus. He's doing what he's supposed to be doing. And here he is in jail. I'm sure he probably thinking, um, hey, God, uh, is this supposed to happen? <laughs> Am I supposed to be in jail? 
So I'm sure he's probably thinking something like that. Um, but who knows? So we can read about one of these occasions in the books of Acts. Acts is a book in the Bible that recounts how the good news of Jesus spread around the world, how the early church began to grow, and what happened to some of the key church leaders of the time, like Paul. Acts 16 tells us about one of Paul's journeys to Macedonia and what happened to him there along with his friend Silas. So this is actually found in Acts 16, chapter 6 through 10, and then also in chapter 16 through 24, but we just kind of summarized it here for you. So in 16, uh, verse 16, I'm sorry, chapter 16, verse 6 through 12, basically Paul and Silas were spreading the word to new places. They were going all over the world trying to spread the word of Jesus. Um, Paul had visions of a man begging them, please come to Macedonia. Please come to Macedonia and help us. So that's exactly what they did because he had that vision that was from God, go to Macedonia. So Paul and Silas, when they got there, they were followed by a female slave who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. So basically what happens is that this she's a slave, so she's owned by someone. She has owners who make money off of her because she can predict the future. So she's following Paul and Silas around, and she's all she's saying, They've come to spread the word of Jesus. They've come to spread the word of Jesus. They're spreading the word of Jesus. Like, constantly. Which you would think, hey, that's like free advertising, right? People would want to come check that out. But, but this is day after day. But she got annoying. Very and annoying. She wasn't doing it like in a, let me advertise, these guys are awesome kind of way. It was, hey, you know, come get these guys because they're causing trouble. So... Paul got annoyed and commanded the spirit out of her, and the spirit left her. So now she no longer has the gift to predict the future. So what happened? Her owners now cannot make money off of her because she does not have that gift any longer. So they get upset with Paul and Silas, bring them to the government and say, hey, they're causing problems, and they get put in jail. That's the gist now, of it. Not only put in jail, they, they get their clothes ripped basically off, and they are beaten almost to death, beaten with rods. Right. So I hope you got all that, that after that long journey where God finally leads Paul and his crew to Macedonia, they face a major crisis. Like Mr. Ken said, they're beaten and thrown in jail for preaching the message of Jesus. This chapter tells us God Clearly, it was a vision. They clearly were led to Macedonia to share the gospel. So if God led them there, why did they end up in prison? Did they make a mistake? Did God make a mistake? Did God put them in prison on purpose? So while the scripture doesn't tell us why God allowed Paul and Silas to be thrown in prison, it does make it clear that God didn't want them to stay there. So we're going to read Acts 16, 25 to 40. Around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying, now they're in jail, praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening. Suddenly, there was a massive earthquake, and the prison was shaken to its foundation. All the doors immediately flew open, and the chains of every prisoner fell off. The jailer woke up to see the prison doors wide open. He assumed the prisoners had escaped, so he drew his sword to kill himself. But Paul shouted to him, stop, don't kill yourself, we are all here. Now, the uh, prison guard was going to kill himself because if his bosses found out that everyone had got out, they were probably going to crucify him. So he was like, you know what, I'll just kill myself and get this over quickly. So that's why he was going to do that. So the jailer called for lights. Again, you know, this is midnight, so they don't have electricity. You know, they got candles. He called for lights and ran to the dungeon and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, along with everyone in your household. And they shared the word of the Lord with him 
and with all who lived in his household. Even at that hour of the night, the jailer cared for them and washed their wounds. Remember, they had been beaten and flogged. Then he and everyone in his household were immediately baptized. He brought them to, into his house and set a meal before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced because they all believed in God. The next morning, the city officials sent the police to tell the jailer, let those men go. So the jailer told Paul, the city officials have said, you and Silas are free to leave. Go in peace. But Paul replied, they have publicly beaten us without a trial and put us in prison. And we are Roman citizens. So now they want us to leave secretly? Certainly not. Tell them to come themselves to release us. So that was like a huge no-no that they were beaten and thrown in jail because they were Roman citizens. They basically had a due process. That was not supposed to happen. So when the police reported this, the city officials were alarmed to learn that Paul and Silas were Roman citizens. They were freaking out. So they came to the jail and apologized to them. Then they brought them out and begged them to leave the city. When Paul and Silas left the prison, they returned to the home of Lydia. There they met with the believers and encouraged them once more. Then they left the town. So Paul and Silas are experiencing a huge crisis. They were in jail, and they were waiting for God's rescue. And holy cow, did they ever get it. Um, they still found a reason, even though they were in that moment of disappointment and crisis, they still found a reason to worship, even while they waited, even while they wondered for what would happen next. God showed up in a miraculous way with the earthquake and the doors flinging open. God rescued Paul and Silas from prison, but that in itself was not the only miracle that happened that night because God also rescued the jailer and his entire family. You read that, and I hope you caught that, that his entire family and, and the jailer gave up their life to Jesus. So that was really the miracle. So even when they were waiting for God's rescue, Paul and Silas trusted God and trusted that he had not abandoned them. While they waited, they worshiped. And after they were rescued, they got right back to work and started all over again. Now, keep this part of the story in your mind real quick. So Paul and Silas got thrown into jail, right? So you think that's you know, just going to totally derail what they're supposed to be doing. And, you know, if we got thrown in jail, we'd be like, man, where's God? What's going on? But they, they kept the faith. But, but here's the interesting thing. While they were in jail, God used them to save people. So in your difficult times that you're going through, you know, if you have any of this stuff going on, your parents are going through a divorce, you know, you lose a big game, you're sad, whatever. You know, someone gets sick, you know, you get hurt, you don't get the college you want to go to, right? Keep in mind, God's got something going on. There might be a reason. You could be hurt and you can't participate in sports, but then that's going to put you in contact with someone that needs to hear about God. You know, you could, your parents could be going through a divorce and you're dealing with all of that, but then you might run into a, another youth that is having the same problem and you can lean on each other and you can be a light for somebody else that's going through a problem or your parents have already been divorced and you know someone whose parents are just starting to go through it. So you can be that guide. You can be that light for them. You know, someone gets sick, you know, or you get sick. You know, again, you know, we, we know someone that's in the hospital and, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure she's telling everyone about God. <laughs> everyone in the hospital. Everyone, everyone in the hospital came. knows. If they came near, they know. And it might just be something that they need to hear. That they're sad, they're depressed, they're lonely. And she might be there thinking, man, you know, why, why am I sick? But she might be the light for somebody else. So keep that in mind. Anytime you're going through trials, you may be the light for somebody else. Right. Put you in the right 
position for that. That's what God does. So I don't know when, when Paul and Silas were worshiping, I don't know what songs they were singing in prison, but I wonder if it was something like this. There's passages from the book of Psalms, which is a collection of songs to God. So in Psalms 9, 1 through 2, and 9 through 11. So I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all the marvelous things you have done. I will be filled with joy because of you. I will sing praises to your name, O Most High. The Lord is a shelter for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. Those who know your name trust in you. For you, O Lord, do not abandon those who search for you. Sing praises to the Lord who reigns in Jerusalem. Tell the world about his unforgettable deeds. So even when Paul and Silas were awaiting prison, wondering what God was doing next, they found a reason to worship. They knew God could be trusted. They trusted God was with them. They knew he was with them. They believed God would be faithful to them no matter what happened. And they were right. God was faithful to Paul and Silas while they waited in prison. And you know what? While we're waiting, God is faithful to us too. So the word faithful actually means... Something? Oh, it's not there? Okay. I thought it was there. Sorry. Faithful means to be loyal, steadfast, constant, and never failing. And that's who Paul and Silas knew God to be. So who's God to us? So we have on our board here, when a situation happens, how you feel, and now we're going to talk about what God is doing in that moment or what kind of behavior we think God has while we're going through that. Okay, so for example, when our parents are going through a divorce, we feel depressed, sad, uncertain, angry. God is right there. How about unchanging? Understanding. Loving. That's the opposite of angry, right? <laughs> okay. So, if you guys are doing good, your answers are so much better than what's on this paper. Angry. I can tell you that right now. So, when you lose a big game, you feel sad and devastated and angry. God is patient, loving. How about our strength? He's our strength, supportive. Teaching. He's teaching you. Yes. Might be working on your ego. All right. Good job, guys. So when you have a loved one who gets sick, you can feel scared and anxious. You're concerned. You feel helpless. You're worried. You're angry. angry. God is loving. In control. About God's your hope. Your hope? What? Sensitive? Sensitive? Oh, 
Hey, how many did you guys catch uh, Pastor Jason's sermon this past Sunday? All right. You were teaching? Well, there's the early service. You can catch that. <laughs> so one, one of the things he said that I thought was really interesting, uh, real quick sidebar, um, real quick. Um, he said, you know, when someone passes away, you know, a loved one dies or whatnot, um, you know, they talk about in the Bible that, you know, that Jesus has gone to prepare a room for us. And what he said, and what, he, what Pastor Jason said was that your room's ready. So, you know, it's sort of odd for us to think about that. You know, you know do I really want to die? I don't want to die. That's not cool because I got stuff I want to do. But if it's your time to be with Jesus, do you really want to stay around and worry about car payments and mortgage and stuff like that? Or is being with Jesus cool? It's cool. Even more of a sidebar, I'm from Louisiana. So when we have a funeral, we are somber. We're crying. We're mourning. And we go to the funeral. And then the person gets buried. And we partay on the way out because it's a celebration. Because that person is now in a better place than we will ever be while we're here on earth. So, um, yeah. There's that. Okay. So, when someone, when you get hurt, when you get hurt, you get angry, you're disappointed, you're sad. God is happy, loving, <laughs> happy. You know, maybe he's redirecting you. You know, you're, you're putting in too much effort to whether it's sport or whatever, and you're not concentrating on, on God, and he's redirecting you back to him. Healing. Healing. So much better. Um, so when you're rejected by that college that you wanted to go to, we talked about being very disappointed, stressed because you're thinking, "Oh my gosh, where am I going to go now?" Angry. Angry. So when you're rejected by college and you're disappointed, God is. Almost dropped the board because I'm left. Planning, planning something, something better. better. How about instead of planning something better, he already has it planned. Maybe something bad was going to happen at that college. And you, he kept you from going there. And that has protected you. Yep. Or you catch that red light and you're like, man, what is going on? And there's an accident up ahead that you would have been in. I've actually been in several situations like that where if I had made the light, I'd have been in an accident. Yep. So if your plans are canceled, if you have these like major plans, you're going to be very disappointed. I'm sorry. You're going to be angry, angry, sad, and disappointed. But in that situation... God is, you need to say it, loving. Anybody else? Anything that they think how God is when that situation happens? Redirecting. Redirecting what? Being. Being your plan. Being your plan. I like that. Maybe you need to, yeah. All right. Thank you, guys. You know, when I was reading this little activity, I was like, oh, gosh, I don't know about this one. I don't know how they're going to do, but that was awesome. So thank you for participating. And truly, your ideas were so much better than here, honestly. <laughs> So it's never easy to experience disappointment and crisis like what we talked about here on our board. But just like Paul and Silas, we can always find a reason to find hope and joy because God is faithful. So when you're waiting for hope or rescue, God can be trusted. 
The Bible is filled with evidence of God's trustworthiness. So if you need more encouragement, go look and see what you can find. God is with you. The Holy Spirit is God's gift to us. The Spirit is how God comforts us, speaks to us, leads us, and helps us grow. God is faithful to you no matter what happens. Paul and Silas were rescued from prison, but they chose to sing to God even when they weren't sure what their futures held. They understood that God is faithful to us even when we're waiting and even when things don't turn out the way we'd hoped. So right now we're supposed to do a small group discussion, but I think that we're going to go ahead and jump over that um, just so that we can have time to get food. Food is important. Food is important. So we've been talking about being, God being faithful to, uh, to all of us. Um, and one of the things I know how God has been faithful in my life I've experienced it recently with the whole pandemic. 2020 was crazy. Um, there was a lot going on, and I think the majority of you know that I lost my job. March 2020, I lost my job. So that was like a major derailment for me, and I didn't know what I was going to do. So I started looking and looking and looking, looking for a job, looking for a job, looking for a job. And we went to summer camp. And I got a call to go for a job at um, the supervisory of electors in Orange County. And so it was during summer camp. All the kids that were in summer camp prayed for me. It was awesome. I went for the interview, knocked it out of the park, and got the job. Showed up for the job for one day. And I had to let them know that Okay, now this is in June. Was it in June? Yes, it was in June, the very beginning of June. The end of June, I had something that I had already planned that I had to be off for on a Friday, one day. And they told me, if you're going to do that, you need to leave now. So I was like, okay. <laughs> so I left. And so here I am again without a job. And I'm like, hey, God. <laughs> This is kind of crazy. She's like Paul and Silas. Yeah. Dude. Hello. Help me out. Is this thing working? Is this thing working? So, but looking back, you know, hindsight is always 2020. You can always see what happens after you've gone through it. And, and I feel it in my heart that that experience was to teach you guys how powerful prayer is. Because you guys prayed for me. I got that job. So you guys did it. It was awesome. So if I had to go through it for that, that's fine. It was good. So fast forward two months, I get an even better job. So it's all good. So we're, we're wonderful. God works like he should. And everything is for the best. So So I don't know what disappointments. Oh. Yes. Go ahead. I'm going to keep my mouth quiet. So I don't know what disappointments or crisis you're facing right now or what you'll face in the coming months or years. But when you find yourself waiting for God to rescue you, I hope you remember what we talked about today. While you're waiting, God is faithful to you. God is faithful to you even when you're not Faithful to God. God is faithful to you even when you're losing hope. God is faithful to you even when you're filled with questions. God is faithful to you even when you're tired of waiting. So when you're waiting for God's rescue, here's what I hope you'll do. Trust that God is with you. That's the first thing. Trust that. Just like Paul and Silas trusted that God was with them when they were in prison. Pray while you wait. I'll say that again. Pray while you wait. Even if the only thing you can say to God is why. 
pray while you're waiting. Worship while you're waiting. I know it's not easy when you're depressed, when you've had that disappointment or that crisis to find hope or joy. And it's not easy to worship God when you're feeling abandoned. But when you choose to hang on to hope, when you choose to not let go in the midst of that darkness, I think you'll see your faith start to grow even more. The last thing, remember God's faithfulness. How has God been faithful to you in the past? Write those stories down. Write them all down so that you can remember them, so you can read them, so you can see it. Scripture is, scripture is filled with these kinds of stories. So spend time reading and reflecting on them. So this week, uh, you know, I want you to think about what we talked today, but specifically this. You need to trust that God is with you. Pray while you wait. Worship while you wait. Put on some music. Listen to it. And remember God's faithfulness to you. Because God was faithful to Paul and Silas in our story. Now one thing I want you to remember tonight. While we are waiting, God is faithful to us too. All right, we have a couple real quick announcements. We'll buzz through them. Save the date, seniors. May 2nd. We have to save the date. Meet and eat for next gen. And then May 16th is graduation Sunday. So, seniors, you can wear your cap on if you would like. You don't have to if you don't. For those who don't want to. And then the same evening, we're going to have a dessert auction. Um, so this is, again, raising money. The fair, the volunteers that we had that went out to the fair, they actually helped raise money for us. So the pie auction is going to be our big fundraiser. So I believe that is the end of announcements. So we're going to bless the food real quick, and then we're let everyone, actually we'll let everyone online go, and then we'll bless the food, and everyone go eat. All right, online. Thank you for joining us, and we'll catch you next week.